Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hello, hello, I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com EffortlessEnglishClub.com Today's show, Effortless English Business Club. Business topic today. Financial freedom. In our book club, we're talking about this same topic. Right, Our book is Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. So that book is focused on financial freedom and getting rich. But getting rich, meaning making a lot of money, is not the same as financial freedom. They're different. In fact, it's possible to be financially free, but make only a little bit of money. It's also possible to make a lot of money, but not be financially free. So my strategy for financial freedom is a little bit different than Robert Kiyosaki's, or at least there's more. <laughs> Kiyosaki talks about making more money. Making more money usually helps. But not always, because a lot of people will make more money, and then what do they immediately do? They spend more. In fact, a lot of people, surprisingly, will make more money, they get a better job, they get a raise, and the first thing they do, they go out and they start spending more, and they spend even more than they make. They use their credit cards more. They borrow more money for a nicer car. They buy a bigger house with a bigger loan, so more debt. I mean, this seems crazy, but it, this is what a lot of people do. They actually, When they make more money, they actually get less financial freedom. We're going to talk more about this with the book club. We'll talk more about how and why this happens. But today I want to talk about my own strategy, my own method for financial freedom that I used myself. And it's uh, a method that I believe is easier than becoming rich. Becoming rich is not always easy. It's, it's simple. We'll see that in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, meaning it's not so complicated, but it's not easy. But what I did when I started to focus on financial freedom. The first thing I did is I found my financial baseline. This is an important idea. Your financial baseline. One of my favorite American writers, probably my favorite, my number one American writer, is Henry David Thoreau. And here's a quote. This is a quote from his most famous book, Walden, which is also, by the way, uh, probably my favorite book, certainly one of my favorite books. He says, A man is rich in proportion to the number of things he can afford to let alone. Now, Thoreau's style is quite formal. Thoreau wrote back in the 1800s, okay? So the style of writing was much more formal, therefore maybe a little difficult to understand. What is the meaning of this sentence? I'll say it one more time, then I'll explain it. A man is rich, so a man becomes rich, in proportion to the number of things he can afford to let alone. What he's saying is, the meaning of this sentence is that the... The fewer your needs, the more rich you are. The less you need, the more rich you become. It's not just about making more money, more money, more money, more money. See, this is the problem. Again, we talk about a lot of people make more money, but then they, they need more, right? They, they start buying even more things. They start wanting even more, even more, even more things. More expensive cars, bigger houses, more, 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 more. So it's never enough. 
So it doesn't matter how much they make, they're always slaves to money. And that's not financial freedom. Not for me, not, not what I believe is financial freedom. And I agree with Thoreau. Thoreau also thought exactly the same. So Thoreau had the exact opposite idea. He said that financial freedom comes from needing less, wanting less, being happy with less, living a simpler and simpler and simpler life, focusing on only what's most important to your happiness and your health, and getting rid of the rest, not needing the rest. Kind of the opposite of our current age, right? If we look at the media and all these like reality shows, it's all these people buying, 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 buying stuff constantly, very materialistic, right? Just focus on more and more and more and more stuff. Well, throw was the opposite of that. So he's saying we become rich. And he, when he says rich, he means financially free by needing less, by being happy with less. I agree. One morning I woke up. It was a hot summer morning. And the air was very humid. And the air was not moving, so I was kind of really hot. And next to me, I could hear my dog panting. <laughs> I had a dog at that time. And so I, I kind of woke up, and as I woke up, I lifted my head, and I hit my head on the roof, the rooftop of my car. I was sleeping in my car. I was living in my car very small Japanese car at that time with my dog. I did it in the summer. This was in the town of Athens, Georgia, my, my original hometown. I kind of woke up and it was hot, <laughs> right? So I rolled down all the windows started the car got out i had this bed it was just a piece of wood it went across it, it's it stayed on the front of the car which is called the dashboard right where the the speedometer and all that stuff is so it rested on that and then it went across and it rested on the passenger seat right? the passenger seat was kind of back and then it went to the back part you know the back over on, and rested on the back seat so i had this long piece of flat wood that was my bed and i had a camping pad on top of that and a little light blanket and then my dog just was sleeping in the back seat so i kind of climbed out of that bed got into the driver's seat started the car and drove and on this morning i drove to this park next to a river next to a river in athens so summer it was hot all sweaty kind of from sleeping in the in the summer and the, the heat we got to the park I let my dog out she went running off she loved to run in the park she was chasing squirrels and running around she also loved to just kind of run into the water she wasn't really a swimmer didn't like to swim but she liked to just splash in the water where it was not so deep so she went she went running off and chasing squirrels and I got a towel and I uh got my these little like kind of swimsuit basically the loose swimsuit and a shirt and i walked through the park went to there's a bathroom in the park so i i went i went to the bathroom you know and to the toilet and then i i changed into my swimsuit and i also had a little bottle a small bottle of liquid soap and i walked back and i knew this i knew the path so i, I walked to the sort of the way back into the back of the park and i knew there's this little kind of hidden area uh along the river kind of covered with trees. My dog followed me, of course. She's running around. And so I we got to this area and I walked into the river. And it was hot. It felt fantastic. Nice cool river. I just I dropped down into the river, you know, and got wet. Got my hair wet, put my head under. My dog was kind of splashing around on the shore. And I went out into the river. It was just a little bit deeper. Not it was it's a very shallow river usually. So 
never overhead, not a strong river, so very safe. So I went in there. I, I left my towel on the shore, took off my shirt, put it on the shore on, the, on, the, on a rock, and just went out there just in my swimsuit and, and my little bottle of soap. And it's a special soap, by the way, too, that's kind of good for the environment. You can It's for camping, this kind of camping soap. So I splashed around, cooled off, felt fantastic. Was, you know, nice sunny summer morning. I just looked around at the trees. I was there kind of in the park, had the park and the river all just me, nobody else around. It was fantastic. A few light clouds, you know, going across the sky. Really beautiful. I mean, I still beautiful and I have I still have the memory very clear like a picture in my head. And then I got my little soap and I just kind of, you know, washed my body really quickly and then dropped down into the uh, the river again to rinse off, get get all the soap off. Stayed there in the river a little bit more, cooling off. My dog just sat in the river too to cool off. And I just felt refreshed, like this great fresh feeling, you know, clean and cooled off and and having this bath in the river out with, with the trees and under the, the blue sky of the summer. Fantastic feeling. Great memory. And I walked over to the shore, of course, got the towel dried off, put on my t-shirt. And, uh, you know, my dog and I, we walked around the park for a while. I let her play and then finally went back to the car and started my day. And I did this. This was kind of my morning, usual morning that summer. I lived in my car for the full summer. And what was great about it is that I had no, of course, I no, had no rent. Why did I do it? Why was I doing that? A lot of people think I'm crazy when I tell this story. But um, my job before that, I was a social worker. This is the end of my social, social work career. It was my last social work job. And I was really tired of it. I was sick of it. Uh, I was stressed at my last job. I did not like... Uh, I don't want to say I didn't like my boss. She was okay as a person, but we didn't agree. So we were arguing all the time. So it was kind of this stressful situation at my job. I was sick of working a full-time job. I just wanted to be free. I was sick of being an employee in general. This is really the start of me realizing that I needed financial freedom and that eventually I needed to start my own business. But I wasn't ready to start my own business at that time. Just wasn't ready. So I, I had to think like, well, how, how can I get more freedom? I, I I was planning to go teach in Japan. I had a job for the fall, but I had this summer coming up. And I just thought, oh, I just, I just want to relax and enjoy my summer. I want some freedom. I've been working this job that I hate for so long. I'm stressed out. I'm tired of it. But if I if I keep my apartment, if I keep all my expenses, then then I'm gonna have to work. I'm gonna have to work through the whole summer until I go to Japan. And I, I just kept thinking about it, and I was reading Thoreau's book, Walden. And I was inspired by him. And I thought, well, I can be like Thoreau. See, Thoreau, what Thoreau did, his book is about, Thoreau, he went, he had the same kind of feeling. And uh, one day he went into the woods, and he just, he built his own little tiny house, and he lived super simply. He grew some beans and a little bit of food, and... His, he cut his expenses to almost nothing. And then he wrote about it and wrote about the happiness of living a simple life and the power of having a very simple life and being financially free. And I thought, well, I don't want to go live in the woods alone, but maybe I could kind of use this same idea. What, what would be a modern idea? How could I do this in a modern way in, in my hometown? And I thought, well, I could, I could live in my car. Right? I would still have a place to sleep that would be, you know, somewhat safe. No one could really bother me. And my dog I had my dog, so my dog could stay with me. And if I did that, then I already had a car. So I, I could cut my rent. I would could stop paying rent. If I cut my rent, I had no rent and no electricity costs. Then I realized, well, I could I could just quit my job. I'd have my whole summer free. And that's what I did. And I did live that whole summer. And that summer, it's one of my best memories that summer. It was fantastic. I just uh, had a great time. You know, I, I had these great memories of bathing in the river and uh, just 
hanging out with my friends and going to coffee shops and writing and exercising and just doing anything I wanted to, having complete freedom. It was like being a kid again. I mean, that was I was in my 30s at that time, but it was like being a kid again, like going back as a kid and having summer vacation, having three months of total freedom to do anything I wanted to. It was great. It was fantastic. It was so great that after my, that Japanese job, I saved money in Japan at that job. When I came back to America again, I did it again. I bought a van, a bigger vehicle, so a little more comfortable. And again, my dog and I lived in the vehicle, in the van, and we did it for one full year the second time. And I had to work a little bit in the when I was living in the van, but I was able to work just part-time in a very low-stress job. And again, I had a huge amount of freedom. So do you have to live in a car? No, what am I talking about here? I'm talking about your baseline. Your baseline, your financial baseline. What is your baseline? Baseline kind of means bottom line. Bottom line. So what I'm talking about, when you need to find your baseline. To be financially free, the first step, I believe, the first and easiest step is to find your financial baseline. It's the lowest level of income and expenses that you can enjoy. So it's not about suffering. Right? Your baseline does not mean you suffer. If you go too low, maybe you suffer, you're really unhappy, you're miserable, then that's under your baseline. So that's not what you want to do. Your baseline is the, the lowest level, the simplest life that you can live and still enjoy it, right? So living in my car, I enjoyed it. It was not suffering. Living in my van the next year was not suffering. I had a great time. I was perfectly comfortable and happy. And it was great. I, I have no complaints at all. I could do it again. I could do it again. For sure, I could do it again. Now, if I went lower than that, like could I be happy being completely homeless, sleeping on the sidewalk, in a city? No. For me, that's too low. I would be stressed out. It would not feel safe to me. I would feel stressed about people bothering me. However, I might be able to live in a tent in the woods if I had, uh, you know, I've had a way to uh, get water, <laughs> running water and, you know, get clean, have a shower, all those kind of things. Also, you know, for me, I, I realized that I, I'm not like a monk. So, I'm a little introverted, so I like small groups, but I don't like to be totally alone. So living like Thoreau, way out you know, in the woods, totally alone, for me, that's too much. It's below my baseline. It's a little too simple for me. Then I start to not be happy, start feeling lonely, for example. So I realize I like living in, in kind of a town or a small city. That's my perfect environment. I like to have you know, a few restaurants and some cafes and things, a few nice modern things where I can uh, go. I like that. So I found my baseline. I found how low I could go and still be satisfied. Let's just say, use the word satisfied. Fear. Fear is the number one reason for wage slavery. Fear is the number one reason. People, perhaps you, don't start their own business or even try or don't try to be a freelancer, or don't try to change to a different job or career that they will enjoy more, but maybe pays less. Or don't try to invest or to do investing. They don't try, they don't take the risk. It's because of fear, 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 fear is the thing. Now, fear of what? Sometimes it's fear of other people's opinions. What will they think? What will they think? What will they think if I do this? What will they think if I fail? What will they think if I live differently? Maybe they'll criticize me. That's one fear. Another fear is just of suffering. Of, oh, maybe I'll be really unhappy if I have to live in a smaller place. If I have less money, if I fail and I make less money and lose my job or the business fails, then maybe I'll be super unhappy and miserable. It's another fear. And the problem is most people never face the fear. They're just imagining these fears, but they really don't know. They don't really know. It's just imagination. The worst thing is fear of the unknown. It's not knowing. 
It's never testing your fear. So this is why the baseline is so important, because the baseline is a way to test your fears and to destroy the fears that are not real and destroy the fears that stop you from trying, stop you from trying to live your dream, trying to start your own business, trying to invest, trying to be a freelancer, trying to get that job that you'll love, whatever it is. So you have to face those fears and the best way to face them is to test it. Just think of it as a test, test it. So your baseline, it means you, you're living now at some level, right? You have an apartment or a house and you have a certain income and you have expenses. So how do you test this? You start cutting them. You start making your life more simple. You move to a smaller, cheaper place. You get rid of some of your stuff. You get, maybe you sell your car. If you have a car, you sell your car. You get a cheaper, older one. And then you see how, how do you feel, right? How do you feel? You try that for a while, maybe even for a full year. And then maybe you, you, you realize, well, this is fine. I'm, it's fine, you know, okay, maybe the big house was nice, maybe the bigger place was nice, but I'm still perfectly happy and safe and comfortable in this smaller place. Congratulations. You're getting closer to your baseline. Do it again. Now try to go even simpler, even smaller. Cut your expenses even more. How does it feel? If you're still okay, you're still satisfied, do it again, do it again, do good, and you keep going to see how low can you go until you become really unhappy. Once you become unhappy, you know, oh, that's my baseline. This is the point where I become unhappy, and then you maybe need to go a little bit up above that. So that's what I did. You know, before I lived in my car, I did the same process. I was cutting, 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 and I got down to a very small, simple apartment, and then I thought, well, can I cut even more? <laughs> what would be the next step? Well, the next step would be living in a car, no apartment at all. And I tried that and I realized it's not, it's not so bad. It's okay. It's okay. I, I, I could still be perfectly comfortable and safe and clean and happy living in a van or a car. I just had to be creative and I did it and I did it. That's the key thing. I tested it. It wasn't just an idea, not just an idea. Right? Because maybe you have this idea listening to me. Oh, I could never do that. I don't know. Oh, ooh, ooh, scary. Oh, it would be terrible. How do you know? You think that maybe. I thought that too. I worried about that. I was afraid when I did it. But then once I started it, I realized, oh, actually, not so bad. Not so bad. Actually, this is fine. A little uncomfortable in the summer. It was, it was a bit hot some nights. Sure. Got some mosquitoes sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, but for me, that was fine. Now, I do realize for most people, maybe car is too much. Living in a car maybe is too low for you. It's okay. Everybody's different. This is the point. Everyone's baseline is different. So you, yours might be lower. You might be able to live even more simply and cheaply than me and still be quite happy and satisfied. Or maybe yours is higher. Maybe a one-bedroom or one-room apartment is your baseline. Or maybe it's even higher still. Maybe, you know, maybe you have kids now and that's too small for you and you know maybe you need a kind of a simple a simple house or a two or three bedroom apartment right? there's not a right answer there's not a wrong answer the point is to know yourself and to to face your fears and to go as simple as possible make your life as simple as possible find it yourself then you know then you know and then you can get rid of all the fears because you can know okay i can live this simply if i need to i can go this low now, this process of finding your baseline, it's temporary, okay? This, it's not something you have to do forever. You can if you want to, but, you know, I don't live in my car now. I don't live in a car, but I did it, I tested it for, well, in total, about a year and a half, right? In two different times. I tested it long enough so I knew I can do that, it's fine, I can be satisfied, I have no fears about that. I could do it tomorrow, like I said, if I, if I had to or wanted to, I could still do it. I don't know if my wife would agree, but <laughs> but I could personally, I could do it still. And guess what that does? It eliminates so many fears. I know I can live simply. I know I don't need to live in a large house. The other thing it did is now, because I lived happily in a car and a van, that if I just live a little higher than that, it feels super comfortable. So 
now I live, we live in a very kind of very inexpensive, small apartment. And it feels great to me. It feels like a little bit of luxury. Because it's it's quite a bit above living in a car. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's the other thing. By by testing your baseline and going down to your baseline for a while, you will sort of retrain, reprogram your brain to need less. So then if you do get a little more and you go back to a little more. You don't need to go up to super luxury. You won't always need more, 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 and be forever unhappy. You can just go up a little bit, and then you'll, you'll be very grateful, very comfortable, very happy and satisfied with that. This is the first step. I believe this is the first and most important step for most people to be financially free. Most people focus on making more money, more money, more money, more money, getting rich. That's what Robert Kiyosaki talks about, getting rich, getting rich. But it's only, I don't even know if it's half. I think it's even less than half of the formula. It does help. Certainly, it helps to make more money, but it's not the only thing. And it's not even necessary. You might be making plenty of money right now, and all you need, really need to do is cut your expenses and make your life much simpler, and you would have a lot of extra money and have a lot more financial freedom. I mean, this set me free. And because I found my baseline, because I got rid of those fears, later, a few years later, when I was ready to start my own business, I, of course, I had some worries, but I was not super afraid. And also, my business had a much better chance to succeed because at that time, we were living in a super cheap one-room apartment with a shared bathroom. I mean, we were able to live very, 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 very simply so I could focus on the business. I didn't need to make lots of money from the business in the beginning. I didn't have a lot of stress about the business because our expenses were so low that I knew, oh, well, I can start the business. If it just makes a little money, I'm going to be super happy. So if it just makes a little money, I can quit my job and be free completely because our expenses are so low. So this gives you a great advantage if you do, and when you do, start your own business or change to a different job or try to start investing, whatever it is you do. When you find your baseline, if you can stay at that baseline or stay close to it, it will, it will make you much more courageous, much stronger, much more fearless, fearless financially. And that will give you a better chance to succeed for sure. Now, I mentioned the second fear that people often have is of what other people think. What will they say? Will they criticize you? Right? You worry about other people's opinions. Well, guess what? Going to your baseline also helps this. Living in my car helped me to face the criticisms and the opinions of other people better than anything else. Because most people in America thought I was crazy. So family thought I was crazy. Most of my friends thought I was crazy. People I would meet definitely thought I was crazy. And they would say it. And so I, I started hearing it in the beginning. It bothered me. Well, you know, I was kind of shy and embarrassed about it in the beginning. But then I started realizing, well, why do I care what they think? I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I feel great. This is wonderful. So as I got happier and happier and realized this is fantastic, I started to be more confident about it. And I would tell people about it and I would tell stories and let them know how great it was. And then I noticed a change. Instead of criticizing me, it was almost like they were a little jealous. Yeah, they would still criticize some, but I could also tell they were jealous of my freedom because a lot of them would be working jobs they hated and just working, 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 working. And I knew they were afraid to do what I was doing. They were afraid to do it. And that gave me great confidence to... Forget about other people's opinions. Forget about criticism. Forget about the haters, the doubters. To be more confident in my decisions and my life. And that also helped me when I started my own business. Again, yes, I was a little nervous about failing, but I didn't care so much what other people thought. Whether they thought it was a good idea or a bad idea, so what? doesn't matter. If I, if I had failed, I, and, and actually I did fail. My first time trying a business failed. So what? I learned. I moved forward. I got some good skills from that first failure that helped me when I started Effortless English.
This baseline is powerful. Finding your baseline will set you free. And most of all, what it does is it sets you free from fear, free from fear. And that is the first and most important step for achieving financial freedom, however you want to achieve the financial freedom. You know, Bob Dylan has that, there's that classic line from the Bob Dylan song. If you ain't got nothing, you got nothing to lose. Right? If you ain't got nothing, if you don't have anything, you have nothing to lose. And so what, what it was Dylan saying in that song? He's saying basically what Thoreau said. He's saying the less you need, if you have, if you, if your needs are super low, if you don't have anything, there's nothing to fear. You can't lose anymore. There's nothing more to lose. So therefore you become stronger and more fearless. He's right. Absolutely. That's true. One of my favorite movies is uh, Fight Club. I love that movie, Fight Club. And then the, the main character, Tyler Durden, says something similar. He says it several times in the movie. He says, let that which does not matter truly slide. That's a strange way to say this. So let me explain that sentence. That which does not matter. That means whatever is not important. Let anything that's not important in your life slide. Slide means to kind of go down and to go, go down and away. What it means is let go. Let go of what's not important. Anything that's not important to you, that's not really deeply meaningful, let it go. Just let it go. Doesn't matter. Other people's criticism, let it go. Doesn't matter. Lots of, you know, big expensive cars and trying to look cool and super expensive, uh, I don't know, clothes and jewelry and always trying to impress everybody and blah, all that stuff. Let it go. It's not important. It's not important for your for happiness and purpose and meaning and your mission and all of that. Let it go. Just let it go. Let everything go that doesn't matter and focus only on the most important things. Find out. Maybe you don't know yet. And this is, again, why finding your baseline is so important. It helps you identify what is most important to you, what really makes you happy, and what doesn't. What do you really need in your life? What's not so important? What don't you need? And there might be some things that you like, but you don't really need them. Again, I like having an apartment but I, I know I don't need it. And that gives me more confidence. It makes me more fearless financially. For sure it does. And in general in life, it makes me more fearless about making decisions, taking risks, doing what I want to do, living free or freely. Now, in future shows, future Effortless English Business Club shows, EE Business Clubs shows, I'll talk more about how. I'll give you some more ideas and tips and ideas and uh, strategies for finding your baseline. As I said, you don't have to go live in a car. Don't be afraid, <laughs> okay? But I just recommend that you start cutting your expenses, trying to live more simply, and start moving towards your baseline. And I'll help you in some future shows to really get down and find that baseline. Believe me, I believe this is the most important step for being financially free. It will give you the power, the fearlessness, the courage, the self-knowledge to help you succeed when you do start that business, when you do become a freelancer, when you do become an investor or whatever it is you want to do. All right. Join my VIP program. Try it for $1. Join my VIP program at Effortless English club.com effortless english club.com i love you i'll see you next time Mwah. bye for now